the onset and development of dementia is life-changing, both for the individual and their family. So it's important to find the right support to help navigate the journey ahead. It's not a natural sign of ageing, dementia. It can be a very frightening and daunting prospect of uh, thinking of living with dementia. Uh, and by early signposting, early recognition, we can help families, as well as the person living with dementia, move forward and live well. People are living much longer now. On the whole, people's brain does start to deteriorate. Um, we know we've got more and more people with early, early dementia now in the 50s and 60s, and I think no one's quite sure why this is happening. Um, we know there's more and more efforts now to try and keep people in their own homes for as long as possible. And I think really the research is only at its early days because it's almost about how, how do you manage the condition rather than can we do anything to prevent it or enhance or stop it happening. So at the moment all the efforts almost is helping you live well with it and how do we provide that. I think the next phase will be how do we have more interventions if we find people are beginning to deteriorate. Everybody's case is different, everybody's individual. It may be that somebody wants to stay in their own home and that is the provision and what's put in place. Um, that's my own personal uh, background from dementia, that's what we did as a family. But somebody else, they may want to be in a, in a care home. I think it's all about talking to people that you trust. So if somebody rang us up who suspected their, their loved one had dementia, it'd certainly be talking to their GP, but also about planning, about understanding that actually dementia is a, a lifelong illness and, and you have to then start making provisions, whether that's daycare, whether that's respite care or whether that's ultimately um, planning to move into a home. People contact um, for advice, for signposting and we would um, refer the person that's calling in to a dementia advisor and the dementia advisor would either give advice over the phone, send advice out or usually arrange a home visit and the home visit then is an opportunity for somebody to be able to talk and ask what they'd like or have advice. And it was very difficult for my sister or myself to actually intervene because at times we would say to her, are you sure you're okay mother, don't you think you should talk to a doctor about uh, your memory situation? And also at that stage, and I suppose it all comes together and it's uh, very subliminal. You don't notice it because it's not instant. Though, of course, she wasn't feeding herself properly. And what very much came apparent was that she suffered a number of uh, health problems where she had to be admitted to hospital. It was clearly evident that her dementia had got worse and she wasn't in a fit state. We decided, with medical advice, to live alone. Living well is about things in the home, how we can adapt things in the home, um, how we can help them with routines. The whole family is affected, so we don't know how somebody's journey of Alzheimer's and dementia is going to progress. So there is no point really that we can say it's with the guidance of the health professionals and again, all sitting down and working it out. Somebody might go into respite care and decide that's for them and change their mind, so. I think right at the beginning, uh, we didn't really want to accept that she had dementia, to be honest. I think it took quite a long time. We were quite a long way down the path. It took a couple of years to do it. And, and we sort of did, thought, it's fine, we'll cope at home, or no problem at all. Um, and then uh, mum started to get up at night and try and go out, or, you know, there were lots of things happening that we realised that we couldn't cope. Um, and for us, really, the catalyst was Dad needed a knee replacement and um, had to obviously go into hospital. So initially, our thoughts were, OK, that's fine, two weeks, we can just let's, let's go for a small respite scenario and see how that went. And I think that was probably our that's first decision for her to go into care. The big emotional drain is the unknown, and, and that's what most families suffer from. So it's, it's about talking through to them what can happen, what will happen, it's about getting them to talk to other people that have been through their experience and providing peer support. But yeah, you're right, the, the, the emotional drain on not necessarily the ones with dementia, but their loved ones is, is huge and it's, it's about providing a handhold service through that process. We encourage people to 
believe it or not, go and look at care homes, even when they don't need care. Having been in quite a few care homes, it's like going to a hotel at times, and uh, if you do need care, what a great way to spend the latter years of your life being looked after properly. Before I stepped in anywhere, I think my, my thought of what a, a dementia care home was going to be was not great, if I'm honest. <laughs> Um, and as we went down the journey, it's become more and more of a pleasant experience. Rather than people being fearful, we try and encourage them to understand what's possible, to try and empower them and to really uh, have their glass half full, not half empty. 41% of the financial cost of somebody living with dementia is care, so it's really important that that care is, again, around somebody's individual needs and what they need to be able to stay active and a part of their community. I think initially, financially, it scared the living daylights out of us, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, there is a real stigma about cost, but it's like anything, isn't it? It's about value. I mean, really and truly, I think the thing that we learned along the way as well was that the most important thing was where she was going to be happy and feel at home, and that really sort of overtook everything else. If you've got your financial advisor, your legal professional and your care home working as a team, then really, even though it's a very distressing condition, it can be much easier for you as an individual and also the family that are left to, to see what's happening with you deteriorating because, again, that's very, very distressing for family members. I think they're looking for quality care, but they're looking for uh, a relaxed, friendly, clean environment and it's all about service and uh, if it's your loved one you would want the best care possible for the amount that you're able to pay. So I think it's also the care home understanding your relative, understanding the resident, I think that's really important. There's some horror stories out there and but my experience has been nothing but positive. For the family, that's a huge transition when your your parent goes in into a, into a home and you leave them for the first time is is heartbreaking. But I think it's more heartbreaking for you than it is for them, if that makes sense. When I look at dementia care now, it's totally evolved. It's very much person centred, and it's more about looking at not just the resident but as the actual families as well, which is really important. Everyone, everyone's involved rather than, I've got my job to do, and that's okay, but no, actually we're all part of the experience. You just get to hear the whole team of people committed to the experience of the people who are living there. And I think you just you pick that up very quickly. It's such a big decision to put someone into, into, into a home. I will, don't underestimate it at all. Um, but we can, if we can help, if we can insist, assist with that, if we if we can reassure the families because they do need that reassurance. It's a big responsibility, you know, it's a position of trust that you're put in and one that we like to take seriously. The amount of trust you're putting in somebody that you don't know is a huge deal and you feel completely lost and it does take a little bit of, of time to build that relationship up but actually once you, you get to that you. stage yeah. you feel like you're part of the family as well, you're all sort of welcome. Well, she has made it her home. And the home work, the you know, going to... the staff's been so good. We're very lucky. We can come in and take Grandma upstairs to the coffee shop and, like, have a coffee with her. Like, just be really relaxed, not feel, like, pressured, and it's really nice. It becomes a real family affair, which is a much... You don't feel like you've lost your relative, which is lovely. Mm. It's more that you've gained mm. a whole <laughs> new set of friends along the way. Well, you have, yeah. I mean, some of them are particular, we, we didn't know them by name. We, it's, pers it's personal friendships there. They're not, they're not carers as such in that respect. Just friends. Living with dementia can be challenging for both the individual and their relatives. But with correct planning and the right support, everyone can continue to live a fulfilling life. For more information on dementia and dementia care, contact these support organisations. <laughs>